Hi, I'm so glad that you're joining us today for the first in our Where Are They Now series. I'm so happy to be connecting with some of my former students, beginning with the awesome Amber King, who's joining us today from the Mars Agency. Um, I know for my students, the first week of the semester, I talked to you about the fact that I don't see our relationship as one where it's confined to the 16 weeks of the semester. Rather, it's just the beginning of what could be a lifelong friendship. And I think um, when I look back across my students, Amber is one that definitely epitomizes this for me. We were teacher, student in the classroom. We be quickly became friends. And it's just been a joy to watch her career and also to watch how she's navigated life in general. And I'm really happy that she is the one kicking off this series for us. So Amber, thank you for spending time with us today. I am so excited. I, uh, I, I love Dr. Molly Rayford, and I say doctor just to remind everybody of maybe how she contrasts with some of your, your other, uh, other professors. Um, here is a PSA, you are experiencing a master class. Um, her being able to bring in all of the students whose lives that she has shaped and careers that she has guided and aggregate all of that for you this class, this special semester that you all are experiencing is really is really something that I hope that you um, look at and, and like Molly said, you, you, you take it as um, not a one and done, but she's been here through my entire career. And um, as much as you engage, and if she's not cha changing your life, uh, you're not listening. <laughs> oh, Amber, I love you. Thank you for that, um, for being my encourager constantly. I'm just delighted yes. about today, and I definitely want to say spend our time talking about the shopper's journey. But to begin, I'd really like to have you share your story of how you even began traveling down this path, because when I look at teaching seniors, if I had to say one theme that always occurs is, well, I would say one that the year, senior year is more bittersweet than sweet. It can be a stressful time. But second, it's that so often seniors are looking for that perfect job, the one perfect company to work with. And I think that your experience of um, not switching majors, but absolutely switching directions is a story that will help emphasize the importance of keeping your options open. So yeah, let me tell you a little bit about that. So um, I was a finance major. Wait, let me correct that. I am a finance yeah. major. Yes. Um, so yes, I have a finance degree. I think I sometimes forget that because I'm a marketer at heart. But let me tell you how that shifted for me. So I met Molly in 2002, Dr. Raybert, hmm. um, and, and she began to really open my eyes to the way that we shop. And um, then, there were, uh, then there were other just touch points along the way where she was able to make me think about the things that I was good at. So because a, a lot of uh, short stories and writings are a part of her class, she was able to give me some really positive feedback that, you know, you should consider marketing. I, I will tell you, and I don't know who needs to hear this in the class, if anyone, but I was a non-traditional student without any scholarships who put myself through college as a finance major who took longer than four years. And I've got Dr. Rayford telling me, um, yeah, we should consider changing your major. I'm like a senior, <laughs> this is not going to happen. So I was like, yep, thank you, yep, thank you, finance major. So I went to Saatchi and Saatchi X, it's a well-known shopper marketing agency that if you don't know, you should research. And I applied for an accounting position. And by the time the interview was over, they had left the room and come back and said, listen, you're in the running for a marketing position. And I was just like, what has just happened here? But I knew that an opportunity was in front of me. I had not planned for this to be my trajectory. And I knew that other people saw something in me and I needed to go with where that they were guiding me. So I just encourage everyone who maybe doesn't have the life plan completely figured out on what your degree um, is going to lead to in the next perfect job, be open to people and be open to the experiences and opportunities that come your way, even if they don't fit in your degree. You know, it's such an important message because I think for seniors, it seems often like everyone does have that plan and they know exactly what they want. But my experience is that honestly, it's such a 
tiny set of students that really know exactly what they want and that that happens in line for. So it's such a good message to start off with. So we're gonna jump right into content. I'm so excited to have your expertise on this. You have had such an amazing career with a great variety of experiences, building up skill sets and capabilities and working with a very wide range of brands and categories that each have different needs and parameters. So um, I'm just gonna leave this wide open, Amber, and I would love to hear your thoughts on uh, the shopper's journey and uh, the role that Mars plays. And um, maybe we could start off by saying, uh, talking about what your role is at Mars and then we'll jump right into it. Great, I am the client development lead or the director for um, the Campbell's Soup account within a division of that referred to as Mills and Beverage. So I lead the strategy and the development of partnerships and programs for things like Pace and Prego and all of the Campbell's Soup. And a lot of what I do is to help guide us on a strategy around how do we develop an insight in order to develop a program or a, um, a way in and to, so that we, our brands can become part of the shopper's life. And how do we do that is by understanding the shopper journey. So I will just jump right in if that's okay, Molly. Great. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. Now, I'll say that the Shopper uh, Journey article by the Mars Agency is absolutely grounded in facts. Mm -hmm. It is a, a great article. It is also 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So something to, to take away from that is that we have taken at Mars a decade of Shopper Journeys, aggregated those, put them into a database with both first party research, meaning we're out doing research ourselves, or our clients have done this research, as well as third party databases, things like Simmons that tell us, you know, how does a shopper shop in a specific category. Back when I started my career to map out a shopper journey was a three to six month process before mm -hmm. even idea development. So we have a program at, um, at the Mars Agency referred to as Maryland. And so Maryland allows us to take all of these inputs from this, this is a 50 year old agency, and take all of these inputs and very quickly aggregate and spit out a shopper journey. But some of the things I wanted to make sure that we, so that would start there. But the first thing that I want to tell you is that I am not a marketer, I am a storyteller. So I am a brand storyteller, and that is what we do. And what our goal is, is really to make sure that brands are proposing themselves to you, the shopper, in a way that is meaningful. And a couple of ways to break that down is that a brand story for a new product launch is going to be different than a brand story for Prego, which you've grown up with and heard about for a very long time. So those are just some things to consider. This is about storytelling and how that story is delivered is really about based on the brand. But brands are constantly proposing themselves to you through stories and that comes through very clear in the article. So I really wanted to make sure that we talked about that. But those stories consist really of two parts, features and benefits. And these are words you've all heard over the years, but let's double click on them for just a second and make sure you know the difference because um, smart marketers make sure that they don't talk about the feature. What does it do? That's very utilitarian. A smart marketing brand story really talks about the benefit. How does it help me? And so just to take a pause on that, I would love for you all to consider features and benefits and how those are different and how they drive a brand story. But then to take it and thread it through is really around when you talk about a benefit, how does this product or item help me? And that is where you come into the story. So I know the article is really all about different parts and players of the story. Your part of the story as the shopper is the brand perception. How did this brand make me feel? How did this brand fit into my life? Was it a positive brand perception? a negative brand perception. And those are really some of the distinct ways that we think about that. You know, what's interesting to me, Amber, is I'm listening 
but I have the bird's eye view of the class. And if I had scripted something for you to say, it couldn't have been better. So it's so fun for me to just have you speak in this way because we've had Sarah Hood come in from Mitchell. She's a storyteller by trade. And so she shared that insight with the students, uh, also a Chimba person. She, um, and then we had Jeff Metzner come in from P&G and talk about how for P&G, brand building is insights, ideas, and execution. Really the same thing that you're saying there from the Mars agency. And then of course, looking at the value of an article like Love Marks that the students read and understanding how that really fueled an entire perspective. And I think Mars Shopper's Journey article really did the same thing for what you're playing out every day at Mars now. Um, I should say, we only have two old articles in the class the whole semester, and those are the two, but I really do think that they are foundational to what's happening today. Well, you, when you find an article like that that is grounded in truth, there's mm -hmm. no need to revise it. So it is, it, even though it's stated, it is what we refer to as human truth. So, um, so yes, it's, it, it's very distinctive. One of the things that I thought was interesting in the article immediately is the title was about shopper journey. Mm -hmm. And then when it got into the body of it, there were terms around consumer. So I wanted to take right. like just nine seconds to make sure right. that this is super foundational as far as if you wanted to go into retail marketing, consumer marketing and, and how they're different. And it may come up a couple of times in some future examples, but those distinctions are the easiest way that I think about it is the chooser is the shopper and the user of the brand is the consumer. So chooser and user, those are the ways that we distinct, that make that distinction. When I am, um, you know, I, I'll tell you a story about, about the Mars Agency, um, uh, founded 50 years ago by Marilyn Barnett. Um, she was a spokesperson in Detroit and saw that um, for supermarket ads that they were only tailored toward men. Mm -hmm. Yet it was um, the female shoppers that were in making those purchase decisions. So she started an agency that made sure that it, the focus of advertising really was about who was choosing the product versus a male oriented advertising. So I, I think that it's really important to drive home that there, that there is a distinct difference between shoppers and consumers. And, that, and that's how I think about it. But I want to dive into the article for just a second Great. around where it talked about six shopper archetypes. And I just like human speak. That's one of the things that um, really maybe distinct, makes a distinction for me when I present to people. They're like, you're so authentic. I'm like, I only know how to speak human. So, um, but let's just think about that as really just types of shoppers, right? If it talks about a shopper architect, those are just types of shoppers. But in those, and they are important to understand, there's a mix of two things. There's types of shoppers, but those definitions also include trip types. Yes. And while that may not be within the article, let's like pause on what a trip type might be for a second and how you may be in a different mindset. Um, so, for example, stocking up at Thanksgiving, right? That shopping trip is going to feel nostalgic. I'm going to look forward to it. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to feel like I'm nurturing my family. The outcome is really going to be positive. A stock up trip at Sam's Club at noon on Sunday, that is a mission trip. And I think that within the article, it's referred to as a task shopper, mm -hmm. but those two things are the same. So if you hear mission trip, task shopper, those are the same, but trip types and types of shoppers are both kind of intertwined within that section. So I really thought that that was a great place to, to spend time and dwell. And to realize that because we're humans, we flow in and out of those types. So you may very well be a bargain shopper on one occasion, but discovery on the other because of this interaction of your human personality and the tri uh, trip type or trip occasion that you're on. Exactly, exactly, great. Um, so I, there's, there's other things that was in the article about the shopper as a battle and, and mm -hmm. the battle of even, uh, self-control. I will tell you this moment is what are often referred to as like either the pinch point 
or the way in. If, when an insight is developed, it's really about what is that internal strife? What is that shopper battle internally? And when a brand can come to the rescue and help that to be a much easier transition, or a brand can tell a story where you are like, I absolutely needed that. That's what, you know, sent me over the edge and took me from a browser absolutely to a shopper. So when it talks about shopper as a battle and versus shopper as a battle of, of self-control, that's where the insight is developed. And it sounds like you heard that from, from PNG. That insight allows us to draft an activation plan mm -hmm. of how to, to reach that shopper. And then based on the different tactics and the way we continue to talk to that shopper, that's where really loyalty comes into play. And then if you have attracted the shopper, broken through to the shopper, and then retained the shopper, that really is the entire shopping cycle with the exception of was it an amazing experience? Do you want to share that with someone? And then that would be the fourth time, right? You have made the recommendation. Someone else is now interested and the loop continues. Right. Advocating for it. So this is not related to what companies do in selling brands. Well, partially related, but I recently watched the social dilemma documentary and I'm not sure if you've seen that, but I immediately required it for my students. They'll be watching it over the next few weeks. But I think that really emphasizes the idea of battle. When you think of the structure that tech companies have set up, the way they draw people into their platforms, the mechanisms they have in place to encourage you to stay in those platforms, I think that battle uh, sort of paradigm or perspective really is understood well in that social dilemma documentary. I think in the branding setting, it's used for good. I mean, oftentimes it's providing shortcuts to things that are going to be more convenient or more relevant to consumers. But uh, I have, yeah, I have a perfect example to build off of that. That one of the, that would be what I uh, refer to as targeted marketing. While you may watch uh, the social dilemma and and feel like you should delete all your apps. Right. Um, please, uh, please, please don't. Right. Uh, but uh, it is how brands reach our our our, our base. But mm -hmm. there are, are tools out there where we can locate a shopper who is interested in specific categories, mm -hmm. and we just refer to them as targeting. We can look at the categories they're buying, and we can make sure that we deliver a personalized message to someone who is open to that brand. The alternative is you deliver that message to everyone right. and then a small section is, is interested, yet you've, your spend is inefficient because you've spent this brand story time for shoppers who, who are not even interested. So we leverage targeting in a way that allows us to have a more efficient spend and make sure we're talking to the right shopper. Right. And it's really a matter then of convenience and relevance and we're not wasting time looking at ads that don't really need a need that we have. So to clarify, when I see that documentary, I see it as really two different parts because the dark side to me is what it's done to our social fabric and the stats that are in there about depression and isolation to me are, they really weigh on me. But the bright side of that technology is the convenience, relevance, timeliness, personalization of the shopping experience. So moving forward, how can our world, you know, find a way to minimize the dark side while still optimizing the bright side? Agreed. And I should point out that I actually did delete Facebook. So, okay. um, <laughs> but yes, it, it was somewhat concerning, but I did want to leave, I did want to leave everyone with today that um, I know you're you know, upcoming store walks with some yes. very reputable uh, people. And so congratulations to, again, uh, your masterclass that is able to have uh, Molly's connections bring in so many um, really industry leaders to help you and to take time with you. And I got to tell you, these are these are challenging times. Mm -hmm. So um, so really, the people that are dedicating time to you, especially for these store walks, really are investing in you. So please make the most of your time. But I did make a few notes of things that you could consider if you wanted to um, map your own shopper journey. Mm 
So essentially, I developed an assignment, but it's up Good. to uh, Dr. Dr. Raybrook to tell us if we're moving forward to assignment. But I do want everyone just to remember you're a shopper. You're a shopper and you know all of this. And that maybe is like the most refreshing thing of all of your classes mm -hmm. you're taking as a senior, right? You shop and you understand this. But let's put it into a little bit of an, a construct as a practitioner, which is if you, the next time that maybe you are buying something, I would love to understand why did I make this trip online or in store for a purchase? And it would be great if you could select a new item you haven't purchased so that you could answer these questions around what kept my attention? What was the brand trying to convey within their story? Again, going back to the article, these are all, we're, we're, tell, we're, we're the recipient of brand stories. You are the receiver of the brand story. So really, what do you think that brand was trying to convey within their story? Was it a feature? How did it work? Was it a benefit? How does it fit into your life? Were you rushed? Did you do research? And just as a fun fact, sometimes research is referred to as pre-tail before you go into retail. So, you know, marketers, we love our, we, we, we love our rhymes. Um, but really, how did the purchase, and I think this is the most important, how did this purchase make you feel? Did this make you feel like it met a need of yours? Did it make you feel, whatever that is, I, I will leave that because that is very subjective. And then I think the last part it, that tells us if the shopping journey continues, which is, were you compelled to tell someone about this shopping experience? Were you compelled to tell someone about this great find that you had? And do remember that right, ratings and recommendations and, um, and just peer-to-peer -peer reviews are still one of the most impactful marketing tools that exists out there. Amber, this is so perfect, and I'm actually going to codify this into an assignment that they'll turn in. So I'll go back through this video and I'll type out some of these key aspects and we'll, I'll share with you what we come up with at the end of the week when they turn it in. I can't thank you enough for spending time with us and it really makes me very happy to see you and to also sort of put it into perspective 17 years ago to picture that you were a student in my class and to think of all that life brings your way and all that you're doing for so many other people. I want to say to my current students, um, Amber is an amazing example of generosity. I can't think of a time that I've asked her to help a student review a resume. I did that just last week. As a matter of fact, I've um, had Amber come into the classroom. We've done a corporate project looking at how people can the breakfast occasion when she was working for Keurig. And I don't take it for granted that building out of those 16 weeks, you're still willing to help total strangers in my class every time. And I'm grateful for that. It's been a joy. I am here. I'm at Amber King at LinkedIn. And so please connect with me. And if, uh, if your students don't have a LinkedIn page, um, please do not go to bed tonight without one. <laughs> That's my PSA. I'm happy to join. I wish you all luck. And please do connect with me on LinkedIn. Always reach out. I'm a Walton College of Business graduate, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Amber. I really appreciate today. Take care.